Hello heretics who may have bought this twisted deviation of something that is already perfect. Here we are with the new mech from PGI, the Warhammer... <coughs> the Warhammer... <coughs> Warhammer 2C. So, yeah. So the clans decided that perfection wasn't good enough for them, and they decided to corrupt it in their own special tank bread way. And here we are with this. What does it come with? A lot of energy and a single missile hardpoint. What specifically, I guess you want to know, an ERPPC in each arm, and some medium pulse lasers in the side torsos, and one in the head, and the SRM-6. Oh joy. You see, the, the clan is that they have to overcompensate all the time, so what do they do? They take something that is pure, something that is innocent, something that didn't deserve this kind of treatment, and they decided to butcher it and piece it back together like some kind of twisted experiment by a serial killer. And so we have this. Now I guess the early thing is, is this worth buying? Well, I would say if you're a heretic, then yes, I suppose it is. It does have a lot of energy hard points. It has a high mounted one in the head. The head of all places. That's, that's a place of the Warhammer you never touch. It's already crafted to perfection, lovingly so, centuries ago. But no, they had to go and break it, didn't they? They had to go and stick that there. And the crotch, why does it look like a Kodiak's head? Clearly there's something going on there, a little Freudian with those tank breeds. So yes, it has a lot of energy, although um, most of it is laughably too low down in the mech, whereas the original Warhammer had its energy hardpoints in the side torsos higher up with the machine guns. So it could hit targets without exposing more of itself, but of course they can't get it right and they have to put the weapons far lower in each side torso. It already suffers from LSAS. The original Warhammer could simply lift its arm over a rock and fire, but unfortunately clan versions lack that common functionality, and as such the mech is completely inept at being able to hit any target unless it's stood out in the open like some kind of small rabbit caught in the headlights and then it can fire its weaponry and do a little bit of damage. Because that's all this can do, is just hope to find something that's standing out in the open. And this is what this video shows, a group of people standing out in the open, caught in the headlights of an oncoming car and they get torn to pieces. Yes, that's why I'm spoiling it for you. The Warhammer 2C performs okay. That's, that's, that's the best I'll give this, because it is a pure corruption of the greatest battle mech that was ever built. You see, the, the clans, they just can't help themselves. They have to mess and tinker, just like they did with the Marauder, just like they have with the Rifleman, and they did it with the Phoenix Hawk, and many others amongst them. They had to mess, had to had to make their own... No, do they have their own battle mechs? No, they have to come back to the great ones, the originals, the best of the best. Knowing that they couldn't surpass them, they have to go and make their own versions and then claim that they're somehow superior. Well, I'm sorry. I mean, in all of their messing around, what did they do to the Warhammer 2C? They added tonnage. It's now an assault mech. Clearly compensating for something here that the Warhammer never had to compensate for because no mech can ever defeat it in one-on-one -on -one combat. Ten-on-one -on combat. Battalion-on-one -on -one combat. The Warhammer is always successful. But the Warhammer 2C clearly needed more work. And here we go. This is what we end up with. A bulimic looking assault mech. You saw how skinny it was there in the mech lab. No real chunk to it. No thickness to it. How can it take any hits? It can't. That's the answer. Falls apart in a second. Running at a mere 64 kph with an engine as large as that. A 320 standard. Now of course you could free up some weight if you put in a clan XL engine in if you really must. And you could probably turn this into a rather powerful energy boat. Again, if you really feel the need to. But of course, I would personally recommend just buying the Warhammer. It does everything perfectly. And there are no problems. But if you have to have this, I don't know, as part of some kind of macabre collection, or you just feel the need that you have to own it, I suppose it's worth 20 sea bills if you had to pick it up. But really, don't you realise you would you would be betraying the Warhammer by doing so? As you can see, there's already many traitors here. I merely have one because I was gifted it as part of a cruel joke, and I'm not one to not highlight this heresy. Well, I don't think you'll find me piloting it any time again soon. This is a 
one-off, a blip. It'll never surpass the greatness of the Warhammer, and it will never live up to such a fantastic, brilliant battle map as the Warhammer. Basically, buy Warhammers. Keep buying all the Warhammers. If you've already got Warhammers, buy them over again. Triple, if you have to. Nurse! I found him, Nurse! What? No! Get out of bed again! N no, I'm fine! You're talking about Warhammers again, Nurse! Damn it, I'm fine! I don't need to... Get your hands off me! Get off me! I, I don't I need any injections! Look, this thing I'm about fine! Warhammers, you, you, no. you need to the, calm down, the sir! The Warhammer you is... You need to calm down! It is great! It's man, get you off me! You need to calm you down! don't understand! I'm you! you don't... There are other mechs! Ah, no! There are other mechs! There is only one mech! No! Look, you need to calm yourself, sir! No. Calm yourself! No!